Shalom and welcome to yet another episode of Editor's Note. I'm Jonathan Hassan, and today I have a special guest with me, my dear sister in Christ and friend, Yael Kalishel. How are you doing today, Yael? Good. Doing very good. Thank Wonderful. you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode. Um, at home, Yair has had surgery for his uh, left leg. Uh, he's doing great. Surgery went very well, so keep him in your prayers as well. Uh, so uh, he will be able to once again return very quickly to us and uh, uh, partake. But let's open with prayer and then we'll dive into today's discussion, which uh, I think uh, is very important for all of us to hear and to remember. So uh, if I may. Thank you, Lord, for today, Father. Thank you for the blessing and privilege of being able to be here together, joined with uh, Yael, uh, to discuss, just talk about who you are, your heart, and, and uh, what we do and, and how we can serve, Father. Lord, I pray that you will bless each and every one of us, our viewers all over the world watching right now, Father, that uh, they may be blessed by today's episode and that we'll be truly be able to praise your name through our words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, um, a small revelation. Yael is a dear sister. I've known her for many, many years. We grew up together in uh, the congregation who is pastored by her father, True. Uh, Meno. Mm -hmm. And uh, beyond our shared love for, for our Messiah, uh, we also share love for basketball. So that was always a very uh, important connection there. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, Yael is a very talented singer, musician, uh, and I'm saying this very objectively. I'm quite critical of music in general. So, um, but nonetheless, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? You've run just several years now uh, the music school here in Jerusalem, but God called you now to start a new page. True. True. So yes, I've been uh, the director of Yuval Worship Center for Music and Arts for uh, a decade together with my colleague Irit, uh, Irit Efert, uh, who got married two years ago and moved. And uh, really at the beginning of Corona, which is when everything happened uh, all at the same time, we realized that uh, God was calling her to a, a new season uh, of marriage and a new country and, and all that. And also for me, uh, it was a realization that uh, one chapter was closing and uh, hopefully a new chapter was beginning. And I was seeking the Lord to see what that chapter would be. And um, in throughout these last two years, he led me to uh, found or open this new initiative. I don't like to call it a ministry just yet. It's not there yet. <laughs> Uh, but a new initiative called Everything Worship. That at the heart of it, and I won't go in too much, into too much detail, but at the heart of it is to reach every people and people group everywhere in the world in one way or another with the heart of the Father. Not to be, mm -hmm. um, you know, sitting still like, uh, like some elements of Christendom today do, but to actively bring the heart of the Father to the people so that they can experience him uh, afresh and new and in a way that each person understands. So in a nutshell, that's that's my new direction and just thinking about different projects, initiatives, and, uh, and things that would bring this about. Through the love we share amongst us, they will recognize us and we can always reflect that love also to those who are not uh, in the know of, yeah. of who God is and, and uh, the, the such amazing um, manifestation of truth Amen. that can really reflect so much uh, for us and through us. Amen. So, absolutely. I, I'd like to uh, actually open with a psalm. Usually we um, do so here. So, <laughs> how about you open in Hebrew, and I'll follow up in uh, English, Psalm 91. Uh, I read it this week and I felt like, okay, this is something that will definitely um, encourage all of us. So, With go pleasure. ahead. Teilim Tzadi Alef Yoshev Baseter Elyon Betzel Shaddai Hitlonan Omar la Adonai Machsi Umetsudati Elohai Evtach Bo Kihu Yatzilcha Mipach Yakush Mideveravot 
בעברתו יסך לך, ותחת כנפיו תכסה. צינה וסוחרה אמיתו. לא תירא מפחד לילה, מחץ יעוף יומם. מדבר באופל יהלוך, מקוטב ישוד צהריים. יפול מצדך אלף ורבבה מימינך, אליך לא ייגש. רק בעיניך תביט, ושילומת רשעים תראה. כי אתה, אדוני, מחסיא, עליון שמת מעונך. לא תאונה אליך רעה, ונגע לא יקרב באוהליך. כי מלאכיו יצווה לך לשמורך בכל דרכיך. על כפיים ישאנוך, פנטיגוף באבן רגליך. על שחל ופטן תדרוך, תרמוס כפיר ותנין. כי וי חשק ואפלתהו, אשגבהו כי ידע שמי. יקראני ואענהו, עמו אנוכי וצרה. אכלצהו ואכבדהו. אורך ימים אשביעהו, ואראהו בישועתי. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for it is He who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His pinions, and under His wings you may seek refuge, His faithfulness. is a shield and bulwark. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or of this arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at the, your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You will only look on with your eyes. And see the recompense of the wicked, for you have made the Lord my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent, for he will give his angels charge concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, that you do not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and cobra, the young lion and the serpent you will trample down. Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life I will satisfy him. And let him see my salvation. Amen. I love the Psalms. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> They always are so encouraging and so, well, most of them are. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it, it grants a lot of solace to, to myself, I, I believe, at times of, of, um, of meditation. When you really seek God and you want to understand his heart, there is no other wor- word. that can grant you the solace with all of uh, the boldness necessary to provide that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we had a conversation earlier this week that I felt was very important for all of us to, um, to hear and, and to really think upon and pray upon. And it has to do with where does the church stand today and does it truly reflect a dynamic spirit, a pragmatic spirit towards the evolving world mm-hmm. that compared to 100 years from now, today, every year, mm-hmm. we need to learn so much new things mm-hmm. and we need to deal with so much that do we understand how to bring the word of God to our surrounding, to, to uh, reach the people who do not understand and how do we follow up there on? Well, I think it's a, it's a complicated or maybe a complex uh, issue that you brought. And it has several categories as you, as you were now bringing it up again. Just thinking there's an element of how do you bring it out? How do you uh, 
live out as a church, as a congregation, as a community. And these are a little bit of two different elements, although obviously there's a, right. an underlying uh, connection uh, there. But, uh, you know, when we previously talked this week, I mentioned that the world has changed ever since Corona or COVID-19 hit us uh, almost two years ago. And you said, well, I beg to differ. Right. Every year in the last 20 years, the world has been changing consistently in a, in such extreme ways. And uh, I guess to both of us, it seems like we're always one step behind. Right. And one step is even, you know, being very gracious <laughs> to where we really are. Understatement, yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think um, to some degree, either we, we get used to living this life of... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, running after, chasing our tails, really. Mm. Um, uh, you know, mechabim srefot, we say in Hebrew, always always putting out fires mm. instead of thinking one step ahead or being ahead of the crowd. How do we get there? How do we uh, go about that? Now, I'm, you know, it's not like I have a master's degree in any of these uh, philosophies, but I just think... Uh, if we take this book that we just read from and we really apply it in a very, uh, in, in a way of integrity where we say what we read and we live it out, mm. that's definitely the first step uh, that needs to be done. We need more people who believe the Bible as it is and carry it out and live it out so that the lives that they um live and that people see and the testimony that they carry doesn't draw people to themselves, but they draw them to the Lord. And it feels like with the world of social media and everything being somewhere in this atmosphere of digital, yeah. we lose the sense of integrity. We lose the sense of seeing people's life for real and not, not filtered or not uh, how they want to put it and, and portray it on right. the, in the digital world. Well, I, I completely agree with that. I mean, the reason I, I do see the corona as, as a shock for many people mm -hmm. was because suddenly government started to enact all kinds of restrictive regulations. Mm -hmm. And I was asking people in, in Europe, in, in the United States and elsewhere, uh, also in Australia, by the way, where it's obviously very uh, strict, mm -hmm. I, I asked them, and how does the church respond how how did a church actually look to the people who attend sunday on a regular basis and uh, right now they can't mm -hmm. w what does the church do so um i heard a lot of frustration mm. of suddenly wait but uh they didn't communicate with us they didn't reach out and say are you able to complete this month with your rent because you mm. don't have a job right now mm. or are you able to assist people by just showing them love going to the window of their houses so to speak and just speaking with them encouraging them mm -hmm. elderly who are uh in in distress mm -hmm. and many of whom are you know they're sitting at home in their uh, 90s and, and even beyond that, mm -hmm. 80s. And they're just looking at the, the time go by and, and nothing to, to, to do. Mm -hmm. Why are they here if not to just enjoy the, the little time they still have mm -hmm. to experience all this investment, I call it, of investing so many years in your family mm -hmm. and your surrounding, and suddenly you're cut off from all of that. Mm -hmm. And that is the majority. Mm -hmm. And people just um, voiced a lot of, of frustration, even anger towards the congregations on this. And I think that it is for us as believers, as, as congregations, to speak into this, mm -hmm. to tell pastors, look, mm -hmm. you need to take care of your flock. A church is not a business. Amen. <laughs> yes, uh, it, it is not. It is brothers and sisters in Christ coming together. Yes, there is structure. Mm -hmm. There is structure in the word of God, but... Ultimately, we're not there to give the pastor a salary. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. It's not about having all those campuses and churches and beautiful buildings. It is about winning souls mm -hmm. for the kingdom. And this is something that I think was so important. And you, you spoke into that, and you also brought up some quote <laughs> about that specifically. Yeah. 
that you read earlier. Can you share us about that? Yeah, sure. Um, just to speak into that um, frustration, I think the biggest thing was the disconnect between um, coming up with a method that we've been doing church for maybe, I don't know, at least in Israel in the last 50, 60, 70 years. There was a thir- certain method of doing church, doing congregation, doing the service, the meetings. And then Corona came and kind of turned, you know, flipped everything up in the air. And and now, it, how do we react to that? And this is, I think, where a lot of frustration came from because we weren't used to doing th- this one-on-one or small group right. type uh, uh, community or connection. And so this is sort of like going back to basics for me. And this is where I, I draw this, drew this uh, uh, quote I read earlier today. It's by Dr. Howard Hendrix, uh, and in a book of Charles Wendell, I uh, am reading, he says he actually basically um, challenges his students to incarnate the truth, which, you know, I love, I love words and I love big sentences and challenges like that. And I thought, mm. what, what on earth would that mean? And he goes on to explain it a little bit. And he says, don't merely discuss the truth, make the truth become living flesh so that others might be drawn to the author of truth. And I thought that's just so, apart from it being beautiful, I don't only want it uh, to resonate with me or me resonate with it because so many times we allow things or we think that we resonate with something and then mm. uh, we think that that's enough. It's it's enough for us us to uh, resonate with something. Right. Uh, we, we believe that this is how we obey. Mm. But the truth is, when when we stop there with oh this felt so good or pastor your word was awesome and I enjoyed the service or whatever we really replace this resonance uh, uh, with obedience we forget <laughs> that there's the action part right. of of living it out and this living out together in this community in 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 obeying the word in living lives of worship really which is the attitudes of our heart with everything mm. that mm. we do, that is what's, um, that is the big magnet to draw mm. people to the author of truth. I, how do we do that in practice, though? Let, would, let's yeah. challenge you on that one. <laughs> that's a good thing. I have some thoughts, obviously, and, and yeah. I do myself uh, believe, and I always also share with the staff here in, in uh, the TV7 office here in Jerusalem, that it is by our actions we will be recognized. Mm-hmm. And therefore, live according to the word of God, live to project Christ through you. Mm-hmm. Because if you proclaim the name of the Lord and you don't walk by it, it's worthless. Mm-hmm. And if you walk by the name of the Lord and then you're asked and, and cause intrigue about why are you walking the way you are, uh, that is where doors open. Mm-hmm. And this is something that is reflected, especially living in a Jewish majority state, mm-hmm. which is not uh, always favorable to to our Lord, and, and no. um, uh, that is an understatement, obviously. <laughs> but nonetheless, when we reflect Christ through us, mm-hmm. we're able to to basically project who He is, His character, yep. and it's not always easy, true, to say the true. least. Yeah, I was meditating on it. Uh, not because I thought you might ask me, okay, so how Obviously. do you do it practically? Right. But just for myself, you know, um, because we have so many concepts. You know, we hear about living in integrity and faithfulness and obedience. We have these big concepts. But how do you break it down to, uh, to elements that you, it, are easier to hold on to and that you can anchor and really live and go about your day uh, and having these as, as the ones that... Um, um, that lead you. Mm. And I thought, for me at least, the two main words uh, would be worship and love. And the, the two are intertwined. For me, worship, and I've, I've researched for years about that and, and have written seminars about it and everything. That's, that's the biggest topic that's uh, uh, mm. on my heart. Um, and, you know, to describe what worship is is really almost to, to try and elucidate the, all the all the details of the celestial skies above. Mm. It, you can't, it, it has no end. No. Uh, but at its core, the essence of worship is the attitude of our heart and, and the, 
the primal motivation that we have uh, in every action, in every act that we carry about, um, really from the smallest to the biggest thing. And so if we tune our hearts to, uh, to our Lord, really mm. everything, everything that we do is an act of worship. And tuning our hearts to him, you know, you, you get to the why. And it, it gets a little bit theoretical, philosophical there. But this is mm. where I think, I believe love intertwines uh, with that. And, you know, love is the casing. It's the essence. It's the means. It's, it's everything in and out of worship. It's because he loved us first that we love him and that we live mm-hmm. about love and carry out love to Absolutely. all those around us. So really in in general, if you if you have these two concepts and you and you dig deep in, that can be your practical um, answer in in a nutshell for that. In, in a nutshell that's yeah. <laughs> it's uh, an understatement. You know, I, I think it is about being tentative to your surrounding. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is something, of course, reflecting your uh, your heart to your surrounding is is um, crucial uh, because uh, the moment you become tentative to your surrounding, you suddenly realize, oh, there are people in need, there are people hurting, there are people who are searching, there are people who are confused right now of how to go about things, yeah. and by realizing what your surrounding reflects. Mm-hmm. You're able to communicate what Christ reflects and how to mm-hmm. treat each wound mm-hmm. that was taken care of on the cross. Yep. You know, so ultimately, um, I, I remember I, uh, there are more homeless people in America than in Israel, mm-hmm. uh, which is an understatement once more. Mm-hmm. But um, it's very sad to see because the first time I came to America, I didn't expect that. Mm-hmm to see all of that. But I remember I stayed in New York and then I saw a group of um, people sitting on the sidewalk with each one with his yeah. sign and, and uh, some had dogs with them. But mm-hmm. uh, I felt so weird about that. Mm-hmm. How is that possible when there are so many congregations in New York City? Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, they, many of them are working very hard mm-hmm. uh, to take care of them, but mm-hmm. it is very difficult to deal with, well, obviously, with uh, the social systems in America being very different than Europe or mm-hmm. uh, Israel or, or elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And every day I used to go to the office. I was there for some specific business. And I used to walk back to my hotel, stop in McDonald's. I don't eat fast food anymore. So <laughs> it, it wasn't also back then. I was very cautious about that. But I uh, walked into McDonald's, bought us several burgers, and just walked down back to the hotel and just started giving them out to people sitting on the streets. Right. Now, obviously, they ask for money. Mm-hmm. I never give money mm-hmm. to people in the streets. You never know what the tool will intend. It's like giving uh, a, a fish a hook. Yeah. Uh, to yeah. try and deal with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but nonetheless, look to your surroundings. If there are people hurting, figure that out. Pray about that. Find their hearts. Mm-hmm. And it's not about coming and saying, do you know Jesus? No, it's it's mm-hmm. not about that. It's about what do you need? How can I help you? How can I encourage you? Mm-hmm. But ultimately, how can pastors and, and church leaders and also people who are going to church and are able to communicate this with their leaders. How do you think they should go about this, Mm -hmm. considering the fact that churches do need to consider, okay, I need to take care of paying the rent for the congregations. I need to Mm -hmm. take care of my family as well. And and there's a lot of selfish Mm -hmm. aspects into dealing with the congregation, um, which are part of being selfless to the flock you're ministering to, obviously. Yeah. I think uh, all of this is grounded in faith. Uh, everything that you talked about now, I mean, at least this is how I see it. And somehow over the years, we've turned it to, we need to get our stuff first, you know, get it done first, get the rent first, get our job done first, get our salary first. And then with the time that we have left, we serve. <laughs> and 
I know this is revolutionary and I know that uh, whoever's listening might be like, hey, how about you do it first and then you lecture us about that. But literally, this is my life right now, trying to figure out how how to turn this thing around where I first serve and I first invest in mm. in spending time in his presence mm. uh, and in being tentative and attentive to, to hear, Lord, what would you have me do today? Mm. Who would you have me visit? Wh- who would you have me look at and speak to? And and yes, it's not like I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a great success in that, but it's a journey for, for all of us. And, and this thing about faith is that we talk about it a lot, but we don't necessarily believe it, which is, you know, mm. a contradiction, contradiction there. But I really believe that if we took the Bible again, as it is, if you look at the life of Elijah, you know, he was he was there up on Mount Carmel. And it's not like he had a discussion previously with the Lord about, hey, so I'm going to erect this altar and I'm going to water it with a lot of water and you just do your thing with the fire, Okay. It's not that he had this previous conversation. He just mm. had such full faith and commanded uh, commanded the Lord to consume the fire so that the people would see that he's the Lord. Mm. It's this kind of faith that I'm after. It's this kind of faith that I'm magnetized to and am exploring uh, in this season of my life because this is... This is the magnet. This is what I believe people are longing to see. Just like uh, when Jesus walked among us, this is the kind of power that he ministered. And and that's the drawing force. And it is a two-way street. Uh, I do strongly believe that if you seek upon the Lord, according to every scripture, everything that this word has brought about, Mm -hmm. he will respond. And it's not in accordance with your will. It's in his will. So keep that also in mind. Be patient and allow him to work through you and through your surrounding um, to really proclaim the name of the Lord. Yeah, thank you so very much. My pleasure. This is all the time that we have for today. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing from you more about those things. And I'm sure our viewers will be also very much encouraged by this. So thank you. And thank you to our viewers as well. Uh, May the Lord bless you. and, And we'll see you next time. Shalom.